Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Tales from the Dark Roast, the podcast dedicated to dark coffee and darker conversations. I'm your host, Mornra James, and we're going to be continuing on uh, with some ghost hunting stories from yet another ghost hunter, a good friend of mine, Mark Van Dyke. Mark, welcome to the show, man. Uh, glad to be here. <laughs> Seems like we've just done this before. A little deja vu going on, but yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> um, well, just to introduce you guys, uh, Mark is a former coworker of mine from probably about, what, 15 years ago or so, back at the TV station, you know, right around 2005-ish or so. Uh, and I didn't know it, but at the time he was into ghost hunting and the spooky and paranormal, and uh, uh, I'm just finding this out. So he's uh, he's got some good stories to tell us. So uh, I know there was one in particular that you had mentioned that we talked a little bit about uh, with a ghost named George. Um, I was staying with a buddy of mine and his fiance and their little girl, well, his little girl. And, um, you know, in casual conversation, oh, you know, yeah, we've got this ghost. You know, his name is George. And I'm just like, yeah, OK, whatever. A um, few little things would happen. And, you know, it's still that doesn't prove anything, you know, um, until one time they uh, had some bubbles and turned the ceiling fan on high and they would blow a bunch of bubbles into the downdraft of the fan and all of them would go straight to the floor, but one would just hover there and then it would go up and then would pop in the blades of the fan. Which bubbles don't do that. Exactly. Uh, you know, I, but still, you know, I was skeptical and, you know, seeing a lot of stuff on TV and magazines and this and that. But, you know, I didn't really consider that as a, an actual experience. Um, weird, but, you know, didn't Not make me a that Right. It might be able to be explained by either the ceiling fan, maybe, you know, uh, an AC unit blowing in at the same time. There's there's possibility of explaining it. Exactly. Yeah. And so it was just like, yeah, sure. OK. Hi, George. Whatever. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, until uh, one evening, uh, my my buddy had to go to work and normally I, I go with him and help him out. But uh, that night I just really wasn't feeling it and i would just decided to stay at the apartment and help the fiance with the little one and um uh, normally whenever we put her down you know she's like a log the entire night she doesn't say anything she doesn't move or anything until it's time to wake up next morning and uh so later down closed the door but left it open a little bit and uh then we went into the living room and started talking and uh while we were talking i had noticed that you know she started rustling around a little bit in her crib and i thought that was pretty odd because normally she's dead to the world but we still continued talking um and just keeping an ear out on the baby monitor in case something else comes up. And uh, wasn't but a few minutes after I noticed that she started rustling, I hear a guy's voice through the baby monitor that says, hey, baby girl. And of course, both of us just kind of stopped, froze, looked at each other and was like um did you hear that i was like yeah you yeah he's like oh crap yeah <laughs> <laughs> um there's somebody in there you know yeah um, oh, oh crap would be the would, would be the nicest thing i would probably say at that moment and yes and so how how long ago was this by the way because uh um this was back in 2003 Okay, so before all the baby monitors and everything started being connected to the internet, I'm pretty sure there were probably some out there that were, but yeah, it wasn't in high demand at that time. Right. So it wasn't accessible. 
Right. So it shouldn't um, have been anyone hacking the the baby monitor, but could it have been like a crossover from like a CB radio or even just a handheld radio, maybe picking up on it? Well, I mean, that's what I thought at first. Um, it could have been a possibility, but generally whenever there's bleed over on a bandwidth, you know, there's some kind of static or something, you know, to give some kind of audible clue that it's bleed over from another source. Right. But this was as clear as you and I are talking. There was nothing in the background that even hinted to the fact that, you know, there could have been any any disturbance in the signal. Right. So this and, was this uh, was in the room as far as you guys could tell. Oh yes. Yeah. Um yeah. Uh so of course the first thought, somebody's in there got to jump up take care of business you know and uh so i went down the hallway and the fiance kind of stayed at the end of the hallway while i checked on the little one and i reached for the door handle and the door slammed shut i was like oh crap all right so i'm trying to open the door and it wasn't locked or anything, but you can tell that somebody was on the other side of the door, just leaning up against the door so you couldn't open it. I can only get it open, you know, maybe a half an inch or so before it pushes back uh, to close. Um, and then it started getting real. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, they trying to kidnap the little one or you know, what the hell's going on? Um, so I'm frantically trying to get into the room and to no avail. And after what seemed like forever, uh, probably five minutes or so, maybe 10, um, then the door swung open and I quickly looked around and there was no one there. And I, I had so much force going into it, I had to put one foot forward where I would have landed on my face. So it so it caught you off guard when it swung open then? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I was going full force trying to get that door open because I needed to get in there and protect that little one. Um, but, of course, when the door swung open and I looked around, there was nothing there or nobody there. And it didn't look like anything was disturbed. And then I felt a cold hand on my right shoulder, a cold hand on my left. And then I was pushed back against the wall on the other side of the hallway. And then the door slammed shut. What, like how firm was the, the press against you? Like, was it, was it something that you could have resisted or were you just so shocked that there were hands on your chest when there was no one in front of you it was a pretty pretty strong force um about as if you and i were getting going to get into a fight and then mm -hmm. you just kind of push me off of you that much that much pressure so so considerable uh, because my, my weight was still forward on that one foot mostly so it had to sit there and have enough force to kind of get me back and all the way against the wall on the other side of the hallway. And then the door shut. <laughs> no. <laughs> and that's when I was about ready to let loose in my drawers. Uh, <laughs> I don't, it's I don't like, blame you there. Um, holy hell, you know, what am I going to do? You know, I got to get in there and that was the main focus and it was right back once i once i reached for the door handle again it was the same thing you know something was leaning up against the door and i'm sitting there and fighting with the door and trying to figure out what the hell am i going to do once i get in there i mean it's not like i could kick his ass or anything you know <laughs> yeah. was, uh, i was just like okay um sure you know 
still trying to get the door open and it's like um what's going to happen whenever it does open it going to push me out get demon possessed or whatever i mean who knows <laughs> yeah, what, is it going to escalate from there yeah exactly and uh have the exorcist going on and a little baby spinning around or something you know i i don't know but uh but i was still main focus was protect the little one and get in there some way somehow and then um of course the fiance she was still standing at the end of the hallway i mean she tried to scream when i got pushed back but all she could do was just <laughs> just a little bit oh, she saw you get pushed out of the room then oh yes yeah um and that freaked her out because she saw how forward i was standing just in the doorway of the room and and to be pushed back like that you know um of course she didn't she didn't realize at the time that you know, she just thought that maybe she didn't see the hands of anybody pushing me she just saw me hit the wall um so you know she was scared for me thinking somebody was in the room and so yeah all she could do is just kind of stand there paralyzed and not able to say or do anything um but then it started dawning on me about george i was like that's the only explanation i could come up with is you know maybe george is doing all this so as i was still fighting with the door i was like george enough it's time to go george stop this you know uh, george um come on now you know baby's trying to sleep and uh, still fighting with the door and then finally i was like george the baby is trying to sleep you can come back and play with her later and as soon as i said that door just swung right open looked around there was nobody there double checked the windows you know made sure you know somebody wasn't doing a houdini trick on me or whatever and escaped out the window or anything but everything was locked up and nothing else was disturbed in in the room and i'm i'm glad i'm drinking some hot coffee right now because i have goosebumps on my arms <laughs> i you know as as a as a father like you just everything that you just said is like on the top of my fear list you know hearing a voice on the baby monitor not being able to get into my kid's room being thrown out of my kid's room and still fighting and not being able to get into it like i don't i don't even know like what i would be able to do if something like that happened now um, oh exactly i mean uh, oh. being a father myself you know I'm, I'm the same way and you know then you know that wasn't even my kid and i was trying to do anything i can and you know uh fortunately i had heard the backstory beforehand and was able to you know uh get through the situation but if it happened here and now i'm i wouldn't know who's behind it and how to resolve it and everything else you know yeah but, i mean having the name george just even if it wasn't the name, but that's what it answered to, just exactly. having that, you know. Oof. Yeah, a little bits of information can can do wonders, even on a regular investigation or whatever, you know. Absolutely. So, well, that'll lead us into the next part. You actually, after this, you ended up forming a uh, paranormal investigation group. Um, it was called Peer, correct? Which stood for. Uh, peer stood for paranormal investigations and educational research and that was the group that you started with uh i believe you said your nephew yes and were you guys mostly based on like the panama city area or just up in the panhandle in general uh we we traveled throughout the panhandle and uh parts of uh alabama and georgia nice how long were you guys would you say you guys were active for 
uh, we were active from 2005 until my nephew. Uh, we lost my nephew about six years ago. What are some of the places that you guys investigated? Uh, one of our favorite places was a place called uh, Anderson Hill. It's a little small cemetery out in the middle of the woods, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, most every time that we went out, we always picked up some kind of activity, whether a picture or EVP. Um, that was actually uh, the first EVP that my nephew ever picked up. And from that moment on, he was diehard, true believer, nonstop. Hey, Uncle Mark, hey, we got a place over here. We got to check it out. And it's like, okay. Hey, Uncle Mark, what are you doing tonight? Nothing. Let's go ghost hunt. All right. You know, sure. You know. Um, so he, he was full so, gung-ho for it after that. Oh, yeah. What totally. Was the, what was the, the EVP that he got? Um. Well, uh, to set up the whole scenario, uh, he set up his recorder at one of the first uh, gravestones uh, as soon as you enter in. Um, I had myself, him, uh, my nephew, my girlfriend at the time, and the two other uh, investigators from another group that introduced us to the place. And we were all on the opposite side of the cemetery. Uh, my ex was um, a substitute uh, teacher at the time, and they have mass graves um, in the back corner. So we had her sitting next to a tree reading a children's book, and that was the only female voice that was there. And it was scripted on what she was reading out. Um, but um, as we went to play back the audio on his recorder, um, picked up a female's voice that sounded kind of young uh, that says, ooh, catch me. Okay. And we didn't have, <laughs> don't know what it might have been related to, if it was residual or, or anything. Um, but um, considering, you know, we didn't have to do any amplifications on the audio or anything like that. We just played it straight from the recorder and it was a class A right off the bat. You know, my nephew was hooked. That would be an awesome first EVP to catch because most of the time you're like, wait, did they say they want mac and cheese? Mm -hmm. You know, like you don't or you know gotta what have they're to saying. Have it amplified and headphones and listening really close even then, 100 times magnified <laughs> and, yeah. and all that. But I mean, straight from the recorder, class A, I mean, yeah, he was up after that. What other kind of things happened there? I know that you've you've mentioned a couple of things with uh, with shadow people and then uh, your ex at the time getting some bad feelings. Uh, yeah, um, well, it all actually happened the same night. Um, we, um, while she was reading the children's book, uh, she started feeling a deep sense of sorrow and, um, uh, it wasn't scared or, you know, anything like that, but she just stopped reading and just started crying out of nowhere. And, uh, thought it was kind of odd, but. She gathered herself back together and started reading again until uh, she started crying again. And that time she was she was done and she got up and walked out of the cemetery. And as soon as she cleared the gate, she was fine. Just back to like normal. Wow. Yeah. Um, so she stood there a minute. And then she's like, okay, I'm, I'm good. You know, I want to go back in. Started walking back in. Boom. Felt the same thing again. And she just, this sudden urge just to cry. So and, nothing, uh, nothing aggressive, nothing of that nature. Just no, sorrow. Just deep sorrow. 
And, uh, you know, we kind of noticed at the gravestones that were around that uh, one of them was a military veteran of uh, World War II, Korean, and Vietnam. So this guy and, was uh, a lifer. Yes. And um, so kind of was getting a hunch maybe it might be related to that individual spirit or possibly not. So what, again, once she stepped through the, the gate to the outside, she was fine. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so, of course, you know, the curiosity got the best of me and put a blindfold on her. Took her around to one of the other entrances of the cemetery and started zigzagging and mazing her way through throughout the cemetery. And with the blindfold on, no way for her to know where, exactly. where she was. It was so. the first time there and, you know, just to see if it was in the same area where that tombstone was at. But about 20 feet from that one, she started feeling it again. And, you know, took the blindfold off and, you know, outside the gate once again. But since it wasn't, you know, kind of figured it was kind of close proximity, you know, to the first uh, headstone. But then within three feet from where she had that feeling after um, being blindfolded, there was a head marker of another vet as well so it's like okay you know so there's possibility of multiples that could be around and everything else so uh um we just kind of dubbed them as the protectors right because the mass grave was a, a children's mass grave right yes um so we kind of figured possibility that uh, you know they didn't want to really be aggressive or anything like that or didn't have enough energy to be really aggressive to get everybody to run out so you know here's my sorrow from the wars boom now get out right leave leave the kids alone and right exactly um and then once we went back and um, started reviewing the video footage that we had. Um, I stopped it in one area and then backtracked it a few seconds. Um, we were where she was sitting at the tree. You could see some of the headstones and everything close to where she's sitting. You can see the fence line in the background. You can see the wood line beyond that. And, you know, you could see everything all the way back. But then whenever she starts feeling the sorrow, and you see her mouth over, I mean, her hand over her mouth, then there's two obstructions in the background between the headstones where she was sitting and the fence line and it was two shadow figures that was there in the background and had they been there previously or at least as far as you could tell on the video uh well previously they weren't there that's how i was able to get the clear shot all the way back to the tree line on the other side of the fence but once she started feeling that sorrow and she had to stop reading then there were the two shadow figures to where you couldn't see you couldn't even see the fence so they were physically the they, they were actually blocking the view behind them exactly so you knew yeah they, they were, were they were a view. solid solid uh shadow figures do you still have that video i don't have the video anymore uh hard drive crashed but i do have the stills uh from the video showing the picture in the background and then uh, everything clear in the background and then the obstructions 
in the next picture. And I'd love yeah. to see those at some point. Of course. And get those and maybe maybe throw a YouTube video up showing just those, you know, those pictures before and after. So right, right. That's, I've got it uh, I've got it said there's a side by side. So, so you, you can, can see, see the clearance them. and then you can see the obstructions next to the clearance. And that place sounds like it's really active. And that's all happening on a single night. Yes. Uh, we haven't had, well, uh, the reason why that night was so active was because Tropical Storm Lee was getting ready to make landfall. I think over, I think it finally made landfall over in Fort Walton area. Um, but of course, there's a lot of lightning you know, a lot of electricity in the air and, and everything else. So there was a, a lot going on that night, that night. You know, it's funny that you mentioned the storm, I, the storm, because I've heard a lot of theories that uh, entities or, you know, ghosts or whatever can pull energy from their surroundings and that you get a lot of ghost stories and, and uh, occurrences happening during thunderstorms and lightning storms. Oh yes, which leads to the you know the the whole trope. It was a dark and stormy night, you know. But mm -hmm. you know, all that energy is giving them something they can pull and use to either manifest or have these things happen around them. So exactly, and that's why a lot of times, you know, you come with a whole lot of equipment, all the batteries are charged up and everything else, and right when something's about to happen, you get zero battery. Yeah. From because 100 dead. From they, 100 to dead. Exactly. That's, that's not the first time I've heard that from people. And you, you see it a lot in the uh, the paranormal shows that are on TV as well. Yeah. Yeah, we, we both just rolled our eyes. I know you can't <laughs> see it, but both our eyes just clicked in the back of our heads. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's good entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> entertainment, that's the key word right there. Hey guys, it's Mort. I hate to interrupt the episode, but we ran extremely long when filming this one, so we're going to be cutting it into two parts. Mark will be back with us next week for the second half of his interview, and we hope you guys will stick around for that. Please find us on Instagram, uh, YouTube, we're on Spotify and Google. Leave us a like, leave us a review, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, help us grow the channel so that we can give you guys more content that you'll like. Also, leave us a comment so that we know uh, how to direct the channel here in the future. Let us know if you like what we're doing or if we need to make changes. We would appreciate any feedback you give us. And you can find us under Tales from the Dark Roast on all of those platforms. So for now, guys, keep your mugs full and your stories dark because I want to hear them.